Good evening and welcome. I'm Michelle Marsh from ABC7. I'm excited to be here to kick off tonight's Harvest for Hope live stream on behalf of Volunteers of America, Chesapeake and Carolinas. Thank you so much for joining tonight's program and for being a beacon of hope to vulnerable men, women, and children VOACC serves. Although this year's program is virtual and we won't be able to hear and see you during the program, we know you're there and encourage you to leave comments below. And let me assure you that there are many others here alongside of you, even though you can't see them, to experience the true power of hope. While we wish that we could have all been together again in person this year, we are glad that you're able to safely join us tonight. So let's get started. I'm honored to be a part of creating positive change in communities in need tonight. Seven News is proud to be a partner with Volunteers of America. You know, every school year we join forces with them to help get school supplies for underprivileged children in Washington, D.C. and the surrounding area. Last year, Operation Backpack helped raise more than $34,000 in donations and 1,500 backpacks. So we're proud to be a part of today's Harvest for Hope. I am honored to now introduce you to VOACC's Chaplain, Reverend Sandra Trice Gray, to deliver tonight's invocation. Reverend Gray has been with VOACC for many years, managing their ministry of service and offering spiritual direction for VOACC's leadership, staff, and clients. So please now give a warm welcome to Reverend Sandra Gray. Thank you, Michelle for that wonderful introduction. Please join me in prayer. Take a deep breath and sink into your spirit and connect with God's presence within. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are our rock. You are the firm foundation for everything we build. You give gifts to your people for the good of the church. You equip and train your people to carry out the good works you have prepared for us in advance. As we gather today, we ask that you provide wisdom, guidance and direction. Remind us that you are our loving Father. You are our fortress. You are our tower of strength. Everything we need is found in you. O oh Lord, our rock and redeemer, guide our thoughts and our words in our discussions today. Let our hearts be filled with your praise. Let us never forget the good things you do for us. You have forgiven our sins. You have rescued us from death. You have crowned us with love and tender mercies. Renew our strength and refresh our souls. Thank you for allowing our faith to fortify us with strength, to transcend our limited human knowledge, allowing divine wisdom to guide our thoughts and actions. Thank you for letting us be a source of hope. We pray this in the name of God, amen. Thank you, Reverend Gray, for that inspiring invocation. I now have the pleasure of introducing VOACC's board chair, Ms. Ruth Pollard. Ruth has been part of VOACC's board for several years now and is an executive strategy and advocacy leader in Washington, D.C. within the field of healthcare. She has always been a strong woman of faith and passionate about helping the less fortunate. Please give a warm welcome to Ruth Pollard. Thank you, Michelle. Can I just say how honored we are to have ABC7 News 
supporting Harvest for Hope this year. They have been longstanding partners of ours and truly have a passion for supporting our most vulnerable men, women, and children. As Michelle mentioned, I'm Ruth Pollard, and as chair of the board of directors, I am so excited to be with all of you this evening. Since 1896, Volunteers of America, Chesapeake, and Carolinas has been transforming lives in communities in need. That's 125 years of service. By supporting us and being here tonight, all of you are a part of that legacy. Together, we are a community of people who care. All of us are people who want to see families overcome homelessness, who want to see recovery for those struggling with mental illness and substance use, who want those living with an intellectual or developmental disability to be supported and feel a part of their communities, who want to see the next generation of young men and women excel in in-demand fields, and who want to ensure our nation's heroes have the support they deserve and need to thrive. Our nation's heroes will always have a special place in my heart. When I first decided to join VOACC's board, I immediately connected with the ministry around veteran services because my paternal grandfather, father, bonus father, and husband are veterans of the US Army. My father and husband also served and defended our country in war. Any one of them could have needed VOACC services. Each year, VOACC helps more than 2,000 veterans and their families obtain housing and access other important services. Nearly 370 of those veterans are located in Virginia. Watching VOACC staff step in when veterans have needed it the most is exactly the kind of change I've wanted to see in my community. Tonight, you can create the change you wanna see in your community. Over the past year and a half, each of our communities have been impacted by COVID. This had our eyes open wide to the disparities of wealth and race. We've all seen the news and have no doubt been touched by each moment in this incredible time. Coming together as a community is important now more than ever. Tonight, you've joined us for an event called Harvest for Hope. Let's let that sink in for a moment. Harvest for Hope. We are surrounded by hope each and every day. Every moment of our lives is filled with hope for a better future. In our communities, our veterans are hoping they can rebuild their lives after service. Families hope that their children can reach their full potential. Men and women are hoping for well being on their pathway to recovery. Individuals living with a disability hope that they can live full lives and not feel isolated in their communities. And youth from low income areas are hoping they move upward in meaningful careers. I want to thank you all again for your passion and for being with us tonight. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you for your moving remarks, Ruth. Next up, I'm excited to introduce you to VOACC's fearless leader, Mr. Russell Snyder. Russ has been VOACC's president and CEO since 2009. And thanks to Russ's leadership, VOACC has grown immensely over the past 12 years, particularly in areas of housing and behavioral health. Please give a warm welcome to Russ Snyder. Thank you, Michelle, for that warm introduction and for being part of our event today. And welcome to all of you and thank you all for being a part of the Volunteers of America Chesapeake and Carolina's 12th Annual Harvest for Hope. We are a Christian church without walls, providing health and human services to thousands of men, women, and children in our service area, which is Maryland, Virginia, DC, North, and South Carolina. We touch the lives of over 11,000 men, women, and children annually. Volunteers of America Chesapeake and Carolinas is also an affordable housing developer with over 500 units of housing in service today. I wanna take this time to thank our sponsors for this year's event. Without their generous support, we would be unable to host these important gatherings 
that help us demonstrate our impact in the community. So help me thank the sponsors of HOPE. Let's take a moment to thank our impact sponsors. And finally, let's give a round of applause and thank our community sponsors. Harvest for Hope is designed to raise unrestricted dollars needed to cover the funding gap to operate our health and human services programs in Virginia and DC. This gap occurs every year because of the demand for our services is frankly greater than the resources that we are provided by our funders. In this past year, we served more than 2,400 people in need across Virginia and DC. This year's Harvest for Hope is focused specifically on funding needed for our VOA Hope Center in the District of Columbia and our Virginia Supportive Services for Veteran Families, SSVF for short, program. Our VOA Hope Center provides comprehensive outpatient behavioral health services to adults who are living with the symptoms of mental illness. The center provides behavioral health treatments to approximately 1,500 individuals annually, many of them who are uninsured or underinsured. In Virginia, our SSVF program, our veteran program, is designed to fill the gap in supportive services for veterans and their families. Veteran communities across the country have been adversely impacted by damaged employment prospects and financial resources caused by the pandemic. Each year, we serve over 300 veterans and veteran families in the Northern Virginia counties and Western part of the state. By supporting Harvest for Hope this year, you are helping us ensure that we can continue to provide life-changing behavioral health services, housing supports, and other services through our VOA Hope Center and SSVF programs. Thank you again for supporting our mission and being present at our event today. Thank you, Russ, and thank you again to all of our sponsors and all of the supporters watching tonight. It's because of you that tonight and the Harvest for Hope campaign are possible. As many of you know, last week, the nation celebrated Veterans Day. Some of volunteers of America's earliest clients were veterans of the Civil War. Through their supportive services for veteran families in Virginia, VOACC has been committed to ensuring that those who served our country can live their lives with the dignity and independence they deserve. Here tonight to share with you in his own words how this program made a difference when he needed it the most is Mr. Joseph George. Let's watch the video. Being a veteran and, and, and meeting Volunteers of America has helped me through any obstacles. I've had some amazing times in my life. I was uh, 18 and I decided to go sign up for the Army. Uh, my father was a Marine. Went to Fort Leonard Wood for my uh, basic training. And you talking about being cold. I was a, a heavy construction equipment repairer. 62 Bravo is what it was called. I fixed cranes, tractors, graders. Being a veteran, I never knew that it could helped me like it did. I'm a singer, I've been singing all my life. In 93, I signed with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis with the Sounds of Blackness. And I was singing at Prince's Club every Wednesday. I went to Chicago. People always asking Oprah for stuff. So I kept writing her and writing her. I just wanted to come there Valentine's Day, give her roses and balloons and just sing to her. The next week, I was on Oprah singing. At the end of the show, they ask you, do you want to ask any questions? Uh, so one lady stood up and said, I don't know, but the brother that was singing, I want to introduce him to my cousin who lived in Chicago. <laughs> so over them tried to do a, a matchmaking thing, but no, nah, I was good on that. It was so amazing when they had me come up and sing. And it's just been uphill since then. Willie has always to been a good kid. My son, he's a he's a he's a lively boy. It took him a while to find his way, but he, star basketball player, football player, everything. 
and uh, he just had a natural gift. June 21st, he was out celebrating his birthday. Police called me and asked me to come down to this crime scene uh, about two in the morning. And uh, they said, it's your son. His body was just laying there, you know, um, just a pool of blood. The guy who um, murdered my son, his only statement has been he was mad because his girlfriend was liking my son. I went home because I was, I was tired. His mom had just flew to town and told him she was there. So I went down to open the door. When I came back up, I heard like some crackling noises. And before I could get back upstairs, I opened the door and all the fire just flew out. I had money in the house. I was trying to get back in the house to get the money and I almost died. When I got to the VA and they were doing the x-rays, they thought I had cancer because they saw little black spots. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> My son get killed this morning. My house burnt up tonight and now you're telling me I got cancer. So when I say, everything I lost everything that day after they did they little procedures and you know tests they called me days later and told me well you you don't have cancer it was blessed probably from the set so I said you know what God I got to get out of here I got to go I had just bought a $400 van the, the van had 400 and some thousand miles on it <laughs> I don't know even to take me in this guy but okay my son, uh, little Joey, had said something about daddy. I heard that in Washington, D.C., they really take care of their veterans. As close as I got was uh, Virginia, Bristol. And I was sleeping in my van every night um, on a Harris Teeter's lot. I was calling around for shelters and just different things. And, and um, the lady from the veterans place told me to call Volunteers of America and see if they would help. When I met Miss Carla, she told me, she said, well, you know what, we can get you out of this situation of sleeping on, on, on the parking lot. And one day, this woman went to bed. And I went from sleeping in my van in somebody's driveway to the Marriott Suites in Gainesville. So, I volunteers of America paid my rent for at least six or seven months until I got this place here. The veterans came through and then Volunteers of America even paid my, uh, uh, what do you call it, deposit, everything. I'm like, who does this? Not thinking about, I had even asked God, just take me someplace where I can start over fresh, not knowing the people even gonna put me in place with. Volunteers of America saved my life. I wake up every day knowing I'm not in a van sleeping. Got to look around, got to go find a bathroom. I got my own place that you all helped me get. Just talking to you all over the phone, it feel like family. Being a veteran and, and, and meeting Volunteers of America in the love of God has helped me through any obstacles. Vets out there, man or female, don't think it's the end, because God will make a way out of no way. And if you see this, call Volunteers of America, and I promise you, all your nightmares is going to turn into dreams. This is the song that I would like to do for you. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my country man hope for all that I do Jesus 
You're the center of my joy, Jesus. You are my Alpha and my Omega, Jesus. You sent volunteers of America to help me, Jesus. You're the center my my joy thank you Didn't that testimony just warm your heart? Hmm. These are the kind of stories that motivate VOACC and all of its dedicated staff to be game changers for those in need. As a supporter of VOACC, this makes you a game changer as well. To share what it takes for VOACC to create transformative and lasting change in the lives of people like Mr. George is Ms. Nicole Granger. Nicole has been executive director of fundraising and development for the past two years, managing VOACC's fundraising and marketing. Let's all give a warm welcome now to Nicole. Thank you so much, Michelle. As executive director of fundraising and development at VOA Chesapeake and Carolinas, I want to first thank all of our speakers for this evening. Your passion, prayers, and hopeful hearts inspire me each and every day to invite others to join us in this ongoing harvest of hope for those most in need. I also wanna take a moment to thank Joseph George who bravely and soulfully shared his story with us tonight. As I listened to Joseph's story and beautiful song, what struck me the most was his strength and courage. Despite all the pain and loss Joseph had experienced, he had faith and was determined to realize a better life for himself. His story demonstrates how we all have the power to transform not only our own lives, but the lives of others and help our community thrive one heart at a time. It takes all of us to help our community. Whatever your reasons for attending tonight, each one of us has an opportunity right now to be a part of this movement of hope. Each year, as we prepare for this event, we give serious consideration about what to ask for. And no matter what, we ask for what we really need most. Because of the ever-changing world we live in, what we do has become absolutely critical to the well being of our communities. Joseph George is proof that these vital programs work. They inspire me to look to the future and to ensure that we're here for the next person who needs our help. This year's Harvest for Hope supports our behavioral health and veteran services programs in DC and Virginia. As mentioned earlier, our Supportive Services for Veteran Families program in Virginia fills the gap for veterans like Joseph, who would otherwise be without housing, employment, and care. The pandemic has made it especially hard for our nation's heroes to live the lives they have earned and deserve. As a result, our program has been working hard to serve more veterans now than in years past. This means we need support now more than ever to address this increased demand for services. We are also in need of support for our behavioral health and substance use recovery services in DC. Our VOA Hope Center in DC is designed to provide the support that underinsured and uninsured individuals living with mental health challenges need to recover and thrive. Across the country, and especially in DC, anxiety, depression, 
and even substance use have been on the rise during these tumultuous times. And it's those without the necessary resources to seek and receive support who often suffer the most. And that's where you come in. We're asking for you to believe in hope. Your compassion can help veterans, families, men, women, and children in our communities. Let's join together and proudly say, I won't let homelessness or hopelessness hurt a single veteran, man, woman, or child in my community. Not on my watch, not today and not tomorrow. We are asking you to join the movement to end hopelessness. If you believe in hope, second chances, solutions, and in the future of our community, let's give hope right now. There are a couple of ways you can give hope tonight. You can make a one-time or recurring personal gift online right now at a level that works for you. And every little bit helps. If you were inspired tonight and would like to make an even greater impact, consider joining the Giving Hope Society. By joining the Giving Hope Society, you'll be able to give hope not just today, but for many days to come. The Giving Hope Society is a commitment to give $1,000 or more for five years. That's just $84 a month, and it will offer more hope to more people. At the offer hope level, you'll provide shelter and a safe space for a homeless family to rebuild hope for the future. At the restore dignity level, you provide counseling to a veteran and help them build a plan to end homelessness. And when you join at the transform lives level, you give all the love, counseling, and tools veterans and families need to thrive and achieve well being. You'll make a difference by joining the Giving Hope Society. That's because the society creates momentum for lasting change. By becoming a member, you'll know that you are making a difference. And it feels great. Join us by offering hope now and into the future. We'll now give you all a few moments to decide how you would like to make an impact tonight. Whether you make a one-time gift or become a Giving Hope Society member, we want you to know that not only VOA, but all those we serve appreciate your love and support. We'll give you a couple minutes now to make a gift that works best for you, and then we'll turn things back over to Michelle to close us out. Thank you, Nicole. 
And for those of you who were inspired to give tonight, thank you for being a part of this community of hope. We hope you enjoyed tonight's program and we'll stay in touch. We thank you for your time and your gifts. We hope you have a good evening.